wanted to talk about a game that's definitely on my radar, and that is Vain. And luckily, we've got Matt from Friend and Foe here with us today. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, so so tell me a little bit about the setup for Vain. I mean, I know it's it's kind of got this minimalist kind of look and feel. Right. And we are going to check out some new gameplay here shortly. But tell me a little bit about, like, what, what do fans need to know about this game? Well, uh, we kind of want people coming in cold. We yeah. We want, uh, it's a very mysterious world. It's a, the, the game is basically an exploration of a, of a strange place. And uh, if you know that, I think that's pretty much all you need to know. <laughs> um, it's that's like it. Segment yeah. done. <laughs> I mean, it's you, you, it's sort of a stand it's it's got some standard sort of third person exploration platformy kind of controls to it but but it's about this uh this strange world that starts off as a desert but there's hints of more stuff to it and the, um really you're just exploring it and uncovering it kind of layer by layer and trying to trying to piece together what happened or or who your character is or or what's what the relationships between the different things you find in the, in the world That's great. Are. And we got that new gameplay footage running right now. This yeah. is coming to PS4. Yep. Uh, gorgeous aesthetic to this one. I mean, I think it looks really, really pretty. And Thanks a lot. You know, how do you respond? Um, I've heard sometimes uh, some folks will kind of compare it a little bit to Journey or something mm. like that. What, what's your reaction to that? Uh, I mean, you can't help but be flattered, right? I mean, that's pretty much it. Uh, it's those, the Journey is a really fantastic game, and, and we're, we're flattered by the comparison. Uh, I think our game is a little bit different. Obviously, you ask any creator, sure. and they're gonna they're gonna talk about what makes their game unique. But um, it seems to have a little bit of a darker feel than Journey did. Yeah, and it's a little bit like it's very much like we want players to find their own way in this world. You know, like we want players to to uh, sort of carve their own path, and we don't really want to hold people's hands. We don't really want to tell them where to go. So, like in this big environment, we're not really uh, showing you specifically where to go. You kind of have to find that out for yourself. Now, the character just turned into a bird. That's Did I just yeah. do that? That, that is was worth correct. Uh, mentioning, I, that I was think. Actually Thank you correct. for that, yeah. <laughs> so the, the, when the game starts, you'll actually be a bird when the game starts. This, this section of the game is a little bit further in. And uh, the character can transform. There's a, there's a mis mysterious kind of golden substance in the world that affects that transformation. Uh, and that golden substance also starts to have effects on other things in the world. And you might see some interesting like the the world kind of looking a little glitchy or moving around or whatever mm. that's that's the effect of that substance now is it like a, a goo or a powder or a uh, it's um an energy or something like that it's gold is the way we see it okay what we call it uh it, but it's it's sort of um uh, yeah it's just a mysterious metallic substance okay it's got this this uh this mysterious power to it and and here we're perching on this uh you know this this pole or whatever this is this bar with these other birds well, how, how did that work so uh there's some mechanisms there's a it's it's uh sort of unclear maybe why these mechanisms might be here but they they are there and you can interact with them uh as a bird you really can't do very much in this game what the most of the gameplay is about finding ways to turn into a child and then effect change that way i see but is that, uh, that gold stuff in the background that we're seeing there yeah that's that's okay what that so that's kind of i see like. we're gonna get a look Aww. at this gold here um, but there are some small mechanisms that if you can get enough birds with you, if you can kind of build up some numbers, you might be able to do something. Uh, especially the section of the game that takes place before this has a lot of that type of interaction. And All right. Carry it through into this cavern. Now, the, the landscape yeah. that we're in almost has a, like, looks like ancient ruins, maybe mm -hmm. post-apocalyptic a little bit. Does with that play into it? With a lot of triangles, too, I yeah. know. It's like kind of a polygonal look to a lot of this. Yeah, we, uh, I mean, we, we sort of have a particular aesthetic we're shooting for. Uh, you know, part of that's a, a, a concession to being a small team is that we can't do a ton of detail in things, so we're trying to pick a, an aesthetic that lets us work fast, but part of it's also that we just think it looks very good. It's yeah. cool. It looks great. Yeah, so it, it does look like some sort of maybe an ancient civilization or something to Meredith's point. Uh, I know you're being cagey on yeah. details <laughs> here, but... Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll continue to be cagey. It yeah. certainly could be. And we'll continue to keep <laughs> prodding and pestering. How, how many years have you guys been working on this game so far? Three years so far. Wow, okay, great. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's been a long road, and, and, and we have uh, some distance yet to go. Now, what, was there a moment or, or a game or a mechanic that inspired this? Like, what, you know, was somebody doodling someday and said, you know... This is what I want to do. Like, how did that kind of come together? It was, I think we, we came across an atmosphere first. Mm -hmm. We came across sort of like a feeling in an atmosphere, and we wanted to build from that. And so it was sort of 
about like coming up with a look and then working backwards mm. and sort of putting gameplay into that. Um, and it was this sort of like this idea of uh, of uh, of the bird transforming into a child and a child transforming into a bird that kind of I think set all that off. Mm -hmm. Now we're up to the orb. I noticed that was glowing before. Yeah, we just kind of like light cues that let you know wh where to progress. Because with a game that's open, yeah. you know, you don't want a player to get lost. You want them to have some sort of arc to carry them through and know what to do next. So is, is light a big cue for you guys? Yeah, we try to do uh, we try to do what we can. Um, we don't want to do too much. We don't yeah. want to. We don't want the player on a leash, you know. But we also don't want the player to get lost. So it's like this is a game where we want people to feel free, free to explore but not feel lost. So it's a... Uh, delicate balance. It is a really delicate balance. It's something that's very challenging for us. Uh, and this is usually what, like, like, we don't put this stuff in until the last minute because we want to avoid putting in those kinds of hints and then, and then people get lost and we put them in, so. Yeah, this is a looker, all right. Now, what's it like to actually control the bird? Is it through the analog sticks, like? Yeah, it's sort of a flight sim -y, like a light flight sim. Okay. Uh, type of controls and uh, you're it starts out with sort of the, uh, usually like inverted controls, but we, we have options to change that for people mm -hmm. who are uncomfortable. But then a standard kind of uh, platforming style, third person action adventure get controls for the child. Yeah, what are the, uh, the actions that the child can actually do? Well, he can, uh, the, the child can shout, uh, which doesn't really do much in this, in this segment. Uh, and then there's a couple of context sensitive actions. Okay. Um, like you can, you can pull, uh, you can push stuff, uh, but th but that's pretty much it. There's Does not a like bird a bird have a have a calling as well. If yeah, the bird yells? can call out. Okay. Uh, most of the actions have kind of similar analogs between the two forms, as much as we've managed to do that. I see. Yeah, this is cool. Yeah, so there's this this sort of like uh, weird kind of we like these like weird forms and and sort of like disturbing shapes, and uh, and you have to kind of plow through those sometimes. Uh, you know, to your to, to, to your point earlier about maybe maybe this is a lost civilization or maybe something came here before, and and there's these hints to to what might have happened and and you you kind of unravel that as you play through the game. Now, from like a, a replayability perspective, mm -hmm. when this title's finally done. By the way, do you have a release time frame or is it you still working away on We're it? We're working on it, and we we, we just want to finish it. We want it to be good. Yeah, that's so. good. I mean, that's a good plan. Make it good. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, from a replayability perspective, are there going to be thing? Are there going to be reasons for players to come back in and play this game again? Uh, the, I imagine that the first time you play through this game, it won't make a ton of sense. Oh, okay. And so that that it's uh, once you get to the end, you might want to play it again to kind of get a little bit more context. I see. Okay. And there might be some things that you missed the first time. Like, okay. Like uh, m most of the stuff you're doing in this in this uh, area here is actually optional. Like you don't have to set that bird free okay. like you just did, and um, so you know, like uh, maybe there's some of these things that you didn't didn't manage to interact with the first time around, and uh, and, and seeing what kind of cumulative effect those might have had over the course of the game mm. is uh, is something that we we hope players might want to take a, another look at. So, is there sort of a cause and effect as you play through the game, and it, it kind of builds and. It it yeah. sounds like there might be different things that happen. Yeah, the whole game is kind of cause and effect. It's okay. sort of like about it's it's, it's sort of like this this uh, strange place that you're exploring and that sort of by just you coming into it sort of starts to fall out of balance and starts and and, and, and big kind of chain reactions start to take place. And Interesting. Um, and so it's not just in the in the sort of crucial plot plot actions that you do, but in, in, in other things as well. It's almost like side quests in a way, something that outside the main story that are optional, but sure. still add to the, the whole of the game. Yeah, and and to be totally honest, we're actually not really sure how what to do except for have those in the game, like in terms of collectibles, we don't really want you to collect stuff. Yeah. So right now you just do them and they yeah. happen and maybe there's a, a, a cool plot reward down the line from it. But Interesting. Now, are there any titles, this game has great mystique. Mm. Uh, and clearly, you know that, and clearly you're trying to preserve that as much as possible, which, you know, I totally appreciate. Are there any titles uh, that you personally look to for inspiration to uh, to kind of to do a good job with that layer of mystique? Uh, one thing we always like to talk about is Another World. Mm, uh, I, th I thought you were going to say that, actually. Yeah, yeah it's just like that, 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 that it's like you're coming into this alien space, yeah. and, and it's up to you to f start figuring out the rules, yep. and start figuring out why things are happening. And, uh, you know, that's a big one for us. I would like to know why, when that child moved the ball, that it almost like he built his own little city over here. Ah. It's like some walls started popping up. Like yeah. Doing some controlling of the uh, architecture. 
So, uh, I mean, you notice that this, this sort of gold material on the child yeah. uh, turned the bird into a child. And like I, it, it, it has some effects beyond that. So know, it affects so. the environment as well. Yeah. Now, is that gold wearing off? Is that the idea? Yeah, so it's, um, it's, it's you get sort of dusted in or coated in this sort of golden dust. And, uh, and because you don't, we don't want the character to be yellow all the time, it kind I of see. like ramps down as you, as you move, for, move away from the gold pile. But Got it. So y is that like a kind of a, a tension there? You have to kind of, or do you, uh, yeah, like in other words, if, if you keep going, will you eventually turn back into the bird? Uh, if you get to a place where like the 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 dust would come off, I see. So like okay. um, at the beginning, he jumped. Y you jump off of a, uh, a, a a tall place, and so in doing that, like the gold sort of like falls off, and you Got turn it. back into a bird. Got it. Uh, water, for instance, if you wade too deep into water, it might come off. Okay. Um, so there's a couple of ways to get rid of the gold, and a couple of ways to get it back. Got it. Yeah. So it seems to me like. You know, there's kind of two main sort of phases to playing in this game. You know, one of them is you play as the bird. Mm -hmm. You're surveying these giant environments, kind of circling around them. And we've seen desert environments, you know, before and uh, when you guys have given a look at the game in the past. And mm -hmm. now we're seeing something that seems like maybe it's ancient ruins, but we don't know. Mm. Um, Definitely has more of an urban feel. Yeah, and then and then so you you're a bird and you're sort of surveying and looking for points of interest, and then coming in as the child to sort of, as you said, affect change to the environment. Yeah, so it's uh, it's exactly that. It's like you you've got this uh, as a bird, you have this freedom of movement, but you've got very limited agency. Mm -hmm. And as a child, you give up a lot of that freedom of movement for more agency. Yeah. And uh, the game itself, like we're trying to build on top of that 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 trade off to an extent. It's a uh, you can read sort of. Uh, mm, I guess there's there's some social metaphors in there that maybe we shouldn't get into. Oh, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But uh, it's it sounds juicy. Yeah. Well, it's just the the, the trade-off between freedom and progress to an extent, or the the. Huh. Um, now you, you can't know. die in this game, right? Because if you jump off the cliff, you immediately turn into the bird. Uh, you That's won't die question. from falling off a cliff. Oh. Again, uh, a cagey little answer. I like oh that. my. <laughs> there there is some there is hazard in the game. It's just uh, especially at the beginning, it's not super apparent. Okay. Interesting. Uh, Interesting. But so you can see that uh, that that uh, we've. Uh, Released this thing by sitting on it with the other birds, and so we came back as a child, so we could let the we could uh, open the cage and let the bird go. Yeah. Now, what would be the advantage uh, for the player in freeing these different birds that are sort of entrapped around the environment? That it's uh, it's not entirely clear at this point what what that might entail. Um, it does have some impact later on later on in the story. Okay. Like you were saying earlier, when all the birds had to sit on the one mechanic together mm. to make something happen, yeah. the more birds you release, the more they are to join you. Yeah, and use, and use those mechanics. There's certainly um, the er, the part of the game before this involves much larger numbers of birds, and and you use that kind of those numbers to your advantage, and so the player will kind of probably continue that instinct here in the, in, in in the cave, but uh, whether or not you get the same result is a is a different question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beautiful game. Thanks a lot. Yeah, it looks great. So we've sort of uh, landed on this thing and and. Un Unleashed another pile of gold, so that we can transform again, and uh, hopefully this will lead us to, to that uh, large golden seed that we that we sort of unlocked earlier. Well, we'll have to wait and see what happens when the game does eventually come out on PS4. Very excited! Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks a lot game for having looks us. Game terrific. PlayStation.